Thanks for joining this quick training on Google Forms. I'm Sonia Fox, Web Technology Specialist with Agriculture Communication. Just as I'm getting started, I'm going to tell you to stop. In the instance that you need to collect money through your Google Form, maybe you're having an event and there's a cost for it, uh, you'll have to use the Marketplace app for that because Google Forms does not have the functionality or security to collect uh, financial information. Also, Google Forms is very simplistic. Uh, there's a limited number of question types you can use, and other um, form tools such as Qualtrics are a lot more robust. Uh, they have some automation built into them. Um, but if, I'm finding that, uh, for the most part, most people can use Google Forms. All right, what is this deal about Google Forms? Did you know Google is more than just a search engine? Uh, through NDSU ITS, we have Google Apps through Education, and that provides us a whole suite of tools through Google um, to do our jobs. And if you look at that screenshot there, this is just some of those, and you'll see we have access to Google Drive. We have uh, For YouTube, we can have our own YouTube channel. And on the bottom there in purple, you'll see there's an app for Google Forms. So why on online forms? I've collected some quotes here from people who use Google Forms, and um, I've been told that they feel that it makes things very simple, whether they're collecting information for our, our, an event or an evaluation, uh, they seem to think it makes the processes really simple. Also, they think it projects a professionalism on our part. Rather than dealing with a stack of papers, um, this is a little more uh, slick. People can access Google Forms through their phone. Um, very mobile friendly and also they feel that their audience is very comfortable in submitting uh, online forms and with online tools in general not only is it easier on your client it's also easier on you all that paperwork you'd have to collect and manage and probably have to input uh, online anyway to use it uh, this eliminates all the paperwork makes it much easier because what happens is those responses end up in a Google spreadsheet which um, you can manipulate the information, you can sort it as you see fit. It also has uh, pie charts and graphs that can display the information as well. And it's a lot easier to share online too, rather than having to say, scan a uh, paper registration and share it with somebody. It's all online, available, ready to use. Here's some examples. I took some screenshots of uh, what people are using Google Forms for. In the top left, um, Brian over at the Agronomy Seed Farm used them for the foundation seed orders. And for the last two years, we've been uh, using the drought form where we send out weekly uh, to the agents to get their input on how the drought is doing in their counties. And then Adnan uses that information to report it to the drought monitor. Um, Sue in Barnes County uses Google Farms quite a bit with her 4-H activities. This is just one screenshot here. She used it for achievement days uh, to get feedback from people who participate in her activities so she could use that information to improve on uh, the activities the following year. So that's the how and why of Google Forms. All right, now that we know what a Google Form is and what it can do, when we go to Google Forms, the first thing you'll see is that they have a bunch of templates that are available for you in their template gallery. Uh, there's examples here for an event registration, a blank quiz, exit ticket, etc. So before you start creating on your own, go ahead and take a look at what's out there. You might already find what you're looking for, and you can edit those as well to make them your own. The ones towards the bottom are actual Google Forms that I've worked on in the past. You'll see that they're different colors, there's different designs, and you do have that flexibility uh, to design it to make it look the way you want it to. However, if it's a public facing form, I would suggest uh, using one of our newly branded logos that are available. Here's the question types in Google Forms. The first one is short answer. The first two options actually for short answer and paragraph is that people are able to input the information, uh, whatever whatever they want to use, they can type in. The other ones are all um, uh, options that you decide for them that they can choose from. But the first two short answers typically used for collecting information on a name or address. Next is paragraph, that just gives them more room. Maybe they want to describe the drought conditions in their county, or if they want to elaborate on a previous question, they can do that with that paragraph uh, question type. Next is multiple choice. Uh, people choose one option from a list. And next is checkboxes, where they can choose more than one option for a list. 
drop down is next that's the same as multiple choice uh, they just click on an arrow they'll see all their options they choose just one option however I suggest don't uh, not using the drop down option I've been reading that it's uh, not really web or user friendly next is file up up upload if you want people to have the ability to upload an image or maybe a Word document they can do that through this option however it is restricted to people who have an NDSU Google Apps for Education login so unfortunately that option won't work if it's a public facing form next we have scales and grids and I have some screenshots here if you want to measure something uh, give them the option to measure something in ter terms of a range like low to high and next is the date option if you need to cl uh, collect some date information this is going to get you a consistent answer because all this information is going to be going into a spreadsheet that you can go ahead and take a look at the responses once they're recorded but what's nice about, nice about this date option is that again for the consistency so let's say someone might say write out July 4th 2018 someone might write 7-4-18 another person might write 7 slash 4 slash 2018 so with this date option you're going to get a consistent um, answer next is the time option again you'll get that consistency there I've never seen anybody use this question type before I'm not sure when we went would but just know that it is available and if you are doing a, if you are doing a event registration form please note this is uh, really important that we need to um, include this verbiage on it since NDSU must provide people uh, with alternate accommodations if they need it we must have this information on here if you go to out to let's communicate and Google that or I have the uh, terminology right here so don't forget to use this when you're doing events